I know you like Bolton. Let's make some. Okay, so what I want to do first is I just want to take this Bolton meat out of this packet and then I'm just going to clean it up for you guys. And then we can talk about spices and things like that. Okay, so here's the meat. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to trim some of the fat off before I spice it. I don't really like too much fat for uh, for bultong. Um But first I have to take something out of the oven. Looks yum, hey? Eh? How does this look though? Pizza with curry topping. Mmm. Yum yum. Let's get started. Alright, so now that all the excess fat is off, I don't really like that. Look, it's up to you if you want to have fat or not. Um, personally, I don't like to be too chewy. Um, and sometimes in between the meat, you get that, that tough, tough texture. Um, which I also don't like, such as this. So I just like to separate this meat. As you can see, this line here, this is a very chewy, chewy bit of the piece of meat that really, it's like bubble gum. And I don't, I don't like that. So I take it off. Okay, so what I'm also going to do now is just going to cut cut the pieces into little thinner strips so that they can cure a bit faster. All right, so let's talk spice for a minute. So in here is my favorite spice. Um, it's your normal salt, black pepper. Um, you got a couple of coriander inside you. Um, that's if you want to make it yourself. Um, but yeah, I ain't got time to make stuff for myself. So I just head on over and I get easy made Hunter's Biltong spice. So now what we're going to do is just marinate it first with the spice. Alright, so once you've rubbed in your spices, uh, both sides, then you just take some vinegar and you gently just make sure that there's not, there's some inside the pan. Okay. So while you do this, the vinegar helps with the meat not going bad. Just make sure let's just spread it about there. And then I'm gonna turn them over as well. Alright, so now that that's done with the vinegar, this is how it looks. So what I normally do is I just place this in a fridge for two to three hours. Look, you can leave it longer, it's all up to you. Um, but um, two to three hours is okay for me because the strips that I cut. So let's do that. Okay, so the meat's been soaking for quite some time now. I think about three hours. So it's ready to get put into the Biltong maker. And this is the one I have. So these are the hooks we're going to use to hook into the meat. And then they get hung inside here. I'll show you how that looks in a moment. Alright, so before I start hooking the meat, this looks just to show you what this Biltong maker is about. So as you can see, there's a light inside there. That also helps to dry. And then there's a fan. And this fan basically dries out the meat. 
the vents at the bottom obviously so it circulates the air Alright, and there you have it, hanging to dry. I'll show you what it looks like inside here. That's how they look. That's my little MacGyver piece here at the end. So yeah, so generally it takes about two to three days for these to, to be ready to be chopped up. Um, but yeah, let's see, sometimes it goes faster, sometimes it's they take three days, but yeah, let's see how it goes. It smells. Hmm. So, let's see. So it's the next day. Um, normally the smaller pieces are done. So let's hope they pray. I'm pushing for bolt on the whole day today. But let's see. Let's see. <laughs> So as you can see, it's stiff. So I think it's done. Well, these small pieces in any case. Let's cut it open and see. Now that looks yum. Very nice. These smaller pieces. Not to dry inside. Let's do a taste test on one of the most How can I say Aaliyah is very very picky in what she eats? Let's see if she likes this. Aaliyah! Do you want to come taste Biltong? So here is our taste tester. Um, yeah, no stubbornest person to feed in the house, which is always. I don't like it because it tastes so funny. But yeah, let's see. Just cut a smaller piece for her. Like it? Mm. Now we just need to wait for the bigger pieces to try out. But for now, get in my belly. So, this is the type of texture, color I normally go for with my biltong. Um, it's still a bit nice and, and soft, a little bit soft, um, but nice and chewy on the outside. So what happens is once I cut it up and then I put it away, then it still dries out a bit more. But it gets all that flavor that's laying around here, as you see. I normally just chuck, chuck that back inside here. Yeah? So it all mixes up. So yeah, so this is the smaller pieces that dry faster. The other pieces, obviously, the bigger pieces. Um, I'll show you now. So the bigger pieces, I'm sure they'll be done by either tomorrow, tomorrow night. But yeah, eating nuts now. Mm. Mm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If you are into boltong and meat, I suggest getting one of these bad boys. Makes the job way easier. And what's nice is it comes with the sharpener. So, when your blade gets a bit blunt, unscrew, shop. <laughs> mm. But let me go give the wife some of the testers. So it's Wednesday. Uh, we started this bolt on about Sunday evening. Yeah, it's Sunday evening. It's Wednesday and meat seems to be ready. Let's have a look. So I'm gonna chop it up. Show you folks what it looks like. So I just want to show you what it looks like. The nice color inside. Nice. It's a little bit soft, not too hard. So this is one of the big pieces I cut up. Look at that. Right, and that's the end product. 
have a look at that. Hmm. Beautiful. There you have it. Making bultong at home. Just with the normal dryer and some spice. I'm good to go. Guys, if you liked it, subscribe. Hit the like button. Catch you next.